The ball Friday having a good game. Very strong forward quarterback. He came into this game injured. And of course, Joe Goff, who is running uh, powerfully as he always does. We'll see if uh, they'll take those players and perhaps mix up their play selection a little bit more in the second half. We'll see if somebody gets on the board in this game. It'll be interesting to watch for the second half to see if, in fact, at halftime, if Mark Friday's growing tightened up on him a little bit. Now, he had a lot of time to warm up in the first half to get ready for the start of the game. Going in at halftime and sitting and getting cold sometimes can affect you and see if it affect, affects his mobility here in the first series in the second half. As we see Friday on the sideline discussing his offensive strategy, they will have the ball first here in the second half as Nate Bush and Rashawn Hardy have gone deep for the Tartars. Coach Brian Van Gorder there. I'm sure he had a lot to say to his troops at halftime. By the way, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank the fine people at Health Alliance Plan for sponsoring this, our fifth season of Charter Football Television. They've been with us each and every year. We'd also like to thank the following sponsors for returning for this year to again sponsor Charter Football. Metro 25 Tire Centers, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Elias Brothers Big Boy Restaurants, Buddy's Pizza, and Northwest Airlines. The proceeds of our Charter Football telecast help benefit the Charter Gridiron Club and the Wayne State Football Program. Penalty flag is thrown to start the second half. The kick goes out of bounds, and uh, the Tartars start off good, or at least with a good omen, for half number two. <laughs> Almost like the beginning of the game with the special teams not working real well for the Ashland Eagles. Wayne State's going to get a good opportunity to start here in the second half and see if they can capitalize on it with a bad kick that's went out of bounds. Wayne State will start right there at their 35-yard line, first and 10. Let's see if Mark Friday's groin is still loose, see if he can get his offense going. I'll bet he didn't even sit down at halftime, probably stood up and continued to stretch it out. You don't want that to tighten up on you. First and 10 and half number two. He's 7 of 16 so far this game. Not bad. Has an interception. Fakes a handoff. Throws a fast pass. To start off the second half, he hits his tight end, Richard Hall, and he's come out bombing in half number two. That's going to be a first down. Well, we don't know if his groin is tightened up yet, but his arm is still sure loose, hitting, obviously, the tight end Hall right on the money. Here we see the replay handoff fake to Goff. Throws a bullet right over there to the tight end. Nice play action face to open up the first uh, the first series of the second half. 18 yards on the play. First and 10. Ball is at the 47 of Ashland. Coach Brian Van Gorder obviously saw something that was exploitable in the first half. As the handoff goes to Joe Golf, he gets maybe two or three yards over the right side. Let's make that three. It'll be second down and seven. Ball goes to the 44 of the Eagles. Goff recognizing he can't go around the right end, so he turns it up field, squares his shoulders toward the goal line and run, started running north and south. <clears throat> Football, like basketball and other sports, can see a team get momentum if they come out strong after halftime and take the initiative. Wayne State coming out aggressive here at half number two. Friday back to pass. Gets the ball to Whitfield, who should have had it, but he drops it, and then he's leveled by Tim Houseman, the linebacker. Big play coming up here for the Tartars at third and seven. Nice quick pass up to Whitfield over the middle. Should have had the ball. Would have gave him a lot better opportunity on here in this third down situation. Quarterback Friday disappointed, but he gets the play for the next, uh, next snap. You kind of expect this one to go in the air, but uh, with that guy, Joe Goff, in the back, and as successful as they've been with those draw plays, you never know. Two men wide left. Whitfield goes in motion. Friday back two pass. Looks, has time. Moves up in the pocket. A marker's thrown down. And he hits his tight end, Rich Hall. But a marker has been thrown down, and it's uh, holding the call against Wayne State. Well, they get another opportunity here, but they're going to be backed up. They're going to have to really be creative on what play they're going to throw here. Um... I was getting ready to say that Mark Friday had an awful lot of time back there to find his receivers. Now we know why, because someone had collared, obviously, one of the defensive linemen for Ashland Eagles. Coach Van Gorder not happy about that one at all. Van Gorder was an outstanding linebacker when he played at Wayne State, then became an assistant coach, stayed in football, and then got his chance to come back and, and coach uh, his alumni. Tough, no-nonsense kind of coach. Uh, big on being a disciplinarian, and I look for big things for the Tartars as long as Van Gorder is their coach. A loss of 19 yards on that penalty. 
That hurts. Third and very long, about 24 for Wayne State. Two backs in the backfield, two wide outs. Friday goes back, gets the ball to Whitfield over the middle, gets a couple of blocks, gains some yardage, but he is hit hard by J.R. Allen and goes down. Gain of about 13 yards on the play, but that's way short. And the Chargers are going to have to punt. Eric Burton heading onto the field to, to punt for Wayne State. Didn't get the first down, but they got a couple of first downs uh, here this, in this first series of the second half. Uh, you like to see a little bit more momentum going, but what was important, they're going to punt the ball here, and Ashland will have the ball deep in their own territory. So it's not a real bad series for the Wayne State Totters. Whitfield has now received four balls, gained 49 yards, but no scores. Ball goes to Ashland, and we'll be right back after these messages. The score, Wayne State 0, Ashland 0. Snookums, I want real home cooking. Got it. No, I want the new home cooking dinners from just $4.99 at Big Boy. Bone-in grilled ham steak. Tasty meatloaf like Mom used to make. Just like Mom. No, no, I want a new home cooking dinner starting at just $4.99. Tender, juicy pot roast, meaty mini spare ribs. I want Big Boy. Big Boy. Get him off me. Feeling pressure to make life more productive? Relax. HAP keeps more people well than any HMO in Michigan. Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. When it comes to health care costs, you can open wide or say ah. With HAP, you can enjoy no deductibles, co-pays, or out-of-pocket costs. Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. The legend of the Colonel's rotisserie gold is the talk of Lake Edna. You should hear what they're saying about the deep marination. Mm. The slow roasting. Mm. That special blend of herbs and spices. Mm -hmm. And the golden brown color. Mm. But five-year-old Allie put it best when she said... The Colonel's Rotisserie Gold in quarters, halves, and holes. At KFC, we do chicken right. Mm. Wayne State University, the home of the Wayne State Charters. 0-0 zero, zero the score against Ashland. Dustin Powers, the quarterback for Ashland, set to try to take the Eagles into the end zone. Hands the ball off to Weaver, hits the pack, tries to spin off, but no good. Kevin Worthy, the outside linebacker, offensive, uh, defensive captain, takes him down. Excellent defensive stand for the... Uh... For well, the Wayne State Tartars here, they got them deep in their own territory. If they can keep them from getting a first down here, they should get the ball in good field position. Uh, nice run by Keith Weaver, though. Took a, he didn't get any yards there, but he took a nice shot, but he spun off of it. This kid is not going down off one hit. You have to gang tackle him and wrap him up. Dustin Powers, a quarterback, uh, trying to get more active. Two for five so far today for 15 yards. The running back's doing a lot of that work as flags are thrown on that play. Should be the offense. As we mentioned before, Powers a big kid, 6'3", 228. Illegal procedure against uh, Ashland, as usual, you're right, Stan Edwards. I don't know about that, but I will say this. That's one thing that they have not corrected in the locker room in halftime, and I thought they would. It's a legal procedure penalty on first down. They've done that quite often. I don't know what, what obviously the problem is. They, in college, they don't call the number of the, of the guilty party, so we don't know if exactly if it's the same person or they're taking turns jumping off sides. Fullback goes in motion, handoff is the Weaver around the left side, and he is hit real hard by two or three charters. Gets close to the original line of scrimmage. Weaver with 48 yards on 12 carries today. He's a tough running back. This guy is going at uh, what some would consider a, a small school being Ashland College, but the way he run, I could see him getting a shot and maybe being a backup on an NFL team. Nice, strong runner, knows how to run north and south, and can carry the mail. He does get five yards on the play, makes it third and ten. Powers back, fakes the handoff, he has time to pass, rolls right, looks, gets the ball out to a wide open. Scott Pauley, the tight end. Pauley finally taken out of bounds. 
big play by the Ashland offense. You've got to be disappointed if you're Wayne State Tartar, particularly on the defense. They had him backed up down there. Big third down play coming up. Here we see on the powers rolling out. Throws to the, into the flat. If had they stopped him right there, they could have got the ball in great field position. Now they've given him a first down and new life for the Eagles offense. That is their first third down conversion of the day. Type of play that gives the defensive coaches headaches and makes them lose their hair. They needed a big game. They gained 17 yards. It's first and 10. Handoff goes to the fullback. Mike Korvaznik. And in on that tackle was number 75, Rob Murray and company. Murray got extra penetration in the backfield that time to hold him just to a two-yard gain. Gained two yards on the play. Second down and eight. Ball is at the Ashland 31. We are at the start of the second half. Ten minutes and 40 seconds in quarter number three. Score is 0-0. Wayne State National. Quick fake handoff to Weaver. Marker is thrown on the play. After Powers completes the pass to his tight end, Scott Pauley. But a marker has been thrown. Excellent fake by Keith Weaver. Actually had me faked. I thought he was doing a pretty nice job. Of running. I, 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 I was looking even at Weaver, ball. too. I thought Weaver had the ball as well. A couple of defenders were faked as well. That is why the tight end was wide open. But the marker was thrown. The officials conferring on this one. Looks like it may be against Ashland. No, face mask to call against Wayne State. Big penalty. And that one hurts. And that one surely will hurt. So we are hearing from our stat people now. There was a gain of 18 yards on that pass play. Either way, it's a first down for Ashland. Face masking the call. It'll be first and 10. And the ball will be at the Eagle 49. They can't afford to give them these kind of plays here. They had them backed up on the, near their own end zone. Now they've let them out. Big third down play. And now here, face mask penalty right here. So Ashton comes out in half number two with some momentum. A big pass play, a big penalty. Weaver gets the ball on the right side. He's able to turn the corner, but not much more. He's met by Mr. Bernard and Candela. Two-yard gain on the play, second and eight. Here we go, show Weaver going off right tackle. He bends to go off tackle, it closes up, then he starts to bounce it to go outside. Sees he can't go outside, he levels it off and goes straight ahead. He's always running straight ahead and low to the ground. This guy, when he looked like he may only get one yard, you look up, he's gotten two or three yards. Ashland driving now. Weaver gets the ball on the left side, and he's hit. Oh, fake to Weaver. He gets the ball to the tight end. I was faked out on that one. And the ball is completed to number 45, Scott Pauley. Excellent fake to Weaver. Had me fake. And the ball is all the way down to the 15 of Wayne State. Make that the 14. And with nine minutes and 31 seconds in quarter number three, the score is 0-0. Ashland taking his turn at knocking on the door of the end zone. Playing running back most of the time is instinctive, but you can be a smart running back. Some excellent fakes by Keith Weaver, which is drawing the linebackers and all the attention toward him. That's why Paul is getting open over the middle and down the sideline, because all the attention is going to Weaver, because he's making excellent fakes from the quarterback. April goes into motion. Weaver gets the ball over the right side and gains some yard. He's inside the 10. Ball's on the ground, but they're going to whistle it dead. They're calling it not a fumble. Would have been recovered by Ashland anyway. Here comes the replay. This is not a fake. This is a given to Weaver. Busting up the middle, north and south. He tries to switch the ball in traffic, which is one reason why he ran. I mean, I'm not sure if that was not a fumble. Looks second and four. Ball Back. was at the eight-yard line. Well, they recovered anyway, so it's all for not. And make that the seven-yard line of Wayne State. Weaver does get the ball this time, left side. He's hit and knocked down. A hand tackle that was successful by David Bernard. They're going to give it to Weaver now. He's the kind of man that they want to ride when they get close to the, to the goal line. They're going to make sure Wayne State keeps an eye on him. And I wouldn't look, I would look for a play action to Weaver now and try to Pauly going across the middle or 
when the Let's back of the end zone. It's third and two. Ball is at about the six-yard line. 58 carries. I'm sorry, 15 carries for 58 yards. Another flag. 